My guest today is Magnus Martinson. Magnus, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Thank it's you for having me. Oh, it's, it's been, been too long. I know. And the last time we did this was in Seattle, if I recall. It was a long uh, time ago. And the last time I saw you was in Malmo, like four years ago. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, what are you doing these days? So I'm still consulting. Mm. Baseline is that's my that's my work. Uh, I, I'm still, if we're talking professionally, I'm consulting about Azure as as per normal, yeah. um, and running my own company and doing what I can to help my customers. You told me you're doing a lot of work with uh, the public sector, with yes. governments. Absolutely right. Uh, so and that's that's new uh, of sorts. It's interesting because now, for example, with. Uh, AI, for example, with the advent of, of, of large-scale AI services in the cloud, the same is true for public sector as for anyone else. They also want to use that and take advantage okay. of these things. So they, now they kind of have to move to the cloud, if you will, but they're, they're in the, uh, the straggler pile, right? They're late to the game. They're late to the game, well, yes. Why is that? Why, are, why is government... <laughs> Uh, yeah. slower to move to the cloud than say uh, because of a lot of legacy and and because they have some of the most sensitive data and and they have to live by all the codes and regulations for everything okay. they have patient data for uh, citizens for example like like it's probably it cannot probably get more delicate than that so they have sure, just been late about they, the yeah, they, about people's health yeah, that yeah if that were to leak out that that's be very could bad. It, couldn't pos yeah couldn't possibly leak out yeah, exactly uh, so, so possibly that's, could but. well but i mean it's, it's that's <laughs> unthinkable un yeah, inconceivable right. that would be a very bad thing yes uh yeah so uh well yeah, let's first let's talk let's start with some of the challenges as mm -hmm. to uh, yeah, uh, so they're they're slow to adopt because they they have all these concerns. Absolutely, and uh, maybe, they're, val maybe yeah. they're valid concerns. They are uh, valid concerns. I mean, they have to they have to live uh, up to the codes and standards and and. Uh, Things like the e EU regulations for for how to govern and hand, handle data for for citizens and and those kinds of things. They, that's that's an absolute must. Uh, right. Um, and so that's of course is a is a big challenge to be able to do these things. Mm -hmm. uh, there are data centers in Sweden. I work with a lot of Swedish customers. That's my main market. I'm from Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, Azure does have a couple of data centers uh, in Sweden for for Azure, so there, there's and that's a big deal also. That it, it helps a lot of, a lot of uh, countries require you yeah. to have data in their country, right? I think for I Sweden, like that, I, I think for Sweden it's more like that helps a lot. It okay. makes it makes the conversation smoother. Uh, mm -hmm. That that they have, they can put it like we we I work for a, a region. Uh, I'm allowed to discl disclose it's region Skåne, the the third largest uh, uh, region in, in Sweden, mm. and they have a very centralized IT. So the IT department there is is quite big, and and uh, they 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 want to uh, like have that conversation about about choosing the data center, and then they're focusing on the the one in Sweden because the, now the data is kind of more home. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Uh, now, so how do you address these privacy issues that uh, oh, wow. are so paramount to these government customers? I mean, they, they, it's it's about policy and these things that they have to live up to all the regulations and 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 ensure that they have the right access to the right data and that there is you know a, a data governance uh, plan for all these things. So data is is one thing, but I mean they just moving and 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 storing and managing data. There's at some point needs to be a, an analysis or some application or something, and with that they they also want to be able to tap into the the cloud services like AI and those things. All the AI services that are so popular right now, sure. all of that runs on Azure, mm -hmm. and to be able to do to, to be able to use those AI services on the data that any company have. Uh -huh. they, they need to move that data to the cloud. And now we're talking maybe moving yeah. petabytes of data. Oh. Uh, <laughs> then it becomes big. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then you need a strong um, you know, uh, story about how to use public cloud for public sector. Oh, that's uh, interesting. AI has, a, uh, there's a lot of discussion around responsible AI yeah. and make sure we're using it in a way that's uh, not going to harm people, a way that it's transparent. Mm -hmm. Is that, uh, is is there, are there specific issues for public sector in that? I'd, I'd say it's about the same, uh -huh. but uh, but I mean, it's, it is, of course, as always, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be exactly r the right way according to the regulations or not at all. 
So, <laughs> so right. that, that, that sets some, some pretty strict specific uh, demands that are, are not at all possible to get around. And they shouldn't be. They yeah. shouldn't be going, going around it. But going through it means that you have to uh, invest uh, differently and, and do different things than you have done before. Uh, I could give an example. Yes, that please. That's really, really in, yeah, to drill yeah, down yeah, into specifics yeah. of what you're advising so here, folks. Not only not only AI and, and data, uh, but let's let's talk about, for example, infrastructure. Um, these uh, public sectors, uh, big IT organizations for decades, right? And they have large partnering companies that uh, supply servers and and all the, the kind of things, like, and and also operations on top of that. Right. Um, companies that, that uh, have built their business on supplying this to public sector. Now, if you're talking about moving, let's say you have hundreds of servers, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's certainly what's, uh, what an IT organization the size of Regions Gona has many hundreds of servers, right. and, and I don't even know how many applications, but many. <laughs> sure. Let's go with many. Um, if they're gonna start moving that pieces of that over to the cloud instead, um, and kind of re-host it, re-architect it, move it over. Uh, that means that they were going to transition away from buying the same amount of compute and and, uh, and infrastructure. They buy less, uh, now. and and so they're bu they're not buying, they're buying less. They're not buying the same amount anymore from these uh, suppliers, which kind of means that these partners, suppliers, they have no incentive for helping the the public sector to do that. We're right. actually moving a part of their business away, right. and so. In order to actually have progress in this, it means that the, uh, the region that I'm working for now has to have its own core team of competence who drives this and owns the governance of the thing so that we decide, I say we because I'm on the team, right? Oh, okay. we, we decide what goes. We tell the partners that we depend upon and we want to have a relationship with, but we tell them this is what's gonna be. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that core governance and that core competency is something that, I mean, there is not such experience inside of the public sector. So you have to uh, either train it or hire it. Okay, and that's part of your job. Is you're, that's part you, of my you job. You have this that's expertise, you're trying to transition it to yeah. the, the public sector employees. And, and put, put uh, sort of, and, and I feel in, in a way, because this is my tax money at work, right? Sure. Um, I, I feel in a way that that's a, it's an honorable thing to be, to be able to, to uh, do, and it's good, good to be able to, to do this work to ensure that the public sector can use the cloud as efficiently and and as good as as, as at all possible for 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 less money you know more effect less money yeah. all of that and and uh, that core um, decision making governance competency is something that needs to be trained into these organizations because you do not have that experience in-house. They have traditional IT experience. They're good at that, mm -hmm. but they're not really good yet at using cloud. How could they be? Uh, that's that's true of all of us, actually, <laughs> and not just of cloud, of any technology. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, if you, you haven't have, done if it. If you're in the IT field, you have to be open to be re reinvent yourself oh, yeah. every few years. Yeah, absolutely, and and and, and it's, it's, of course, challenging. Mm -hmm. there are, and, and we're publicly talking about the reality of these challenges and how we are bridging and and or working to to live under those challenges and and trying to overcome some of that hmm. it's easy it's not easy i know in the u.s there is uh there's actually azure has a government cloud which is separate data centers yep. which i don't think those exist in europe no uh, is there is there some isolation that you can implement within the same data centers <coughs> excuse me no um no there isn't really um that I know of, we're talking about using public cloud uh, resources, mm -hmm. um, uh, just as is, uh, for for uh, many things. Like for example, let's let's not take something that is the uh, patient data because that, that's it's highly super highly sensitive. Okay. But let's talk about, for example, anything like the public website for the region. For example, right. um, it's just a web app. Basically, it seems like a low but risk it's, it's, thing. Yeah, it's an informational web app, mm -hmm. but. What it is, it's, 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 classed, it's classed as critical infrastructure hmm. because this is the system with which the region informs the citizens if there is a crisis. I see. Which means that that system has to work. Like, right, right. right? It's, it's the first place that people will browse to if there is a crisis, right? And the crisis alarms are, 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 are ringing, right? People will immediately yeah. browse to that so page. So the big issue that for that isn't work. so much privacy, it's uh, availability. Availability, High availability. Yeah. That just has to work, yeah. right? Uh, and, and you have to be able to be, uh, you have to 
be able to sign into that system. It seems and like it the needs cloud would be, be way better than That's an on-premise exactly right. data center because yeah. of the redundancy. So there's huge opportunity in applications like that because the cloud can really, uh, you know, with all the, the capabilities of the cloud, self-healing, auto-scaling, uh, and, and, you know, so that stuff helps a lot yeah. for, for applications of this uh, uh, dignity, of this, this importance. I remember uh, 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, mm. there, was, uh, there was resistance, there was trust, you know, should I trust this cloud yep. among uh, the customers that I was talking to? Absolutely. And uh, since the governments tend to be later adopters of this, are we feeling that now or have they got over that? Uh, I think that we are feeling that we are getting over it uh -huh. uh, and that there is, um, I don't know very well about regulations and stuff, but I know that there's work being done at, at the EU level as well, and Sweden is part of the EU. Yeah, uh, European so Union. If, yeah, the European Union. So, so if we can, if we can uh, live uh, or create a, 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 a rule or a guidance or um, set, of, set of, of, of restrictions and rules that we need to live up to at a, at a central level, then everyone can like pitch in and help each other and like, like get over it like, and, sure. and, and be able to move on and, and really start using the cloud. So us, for example, now, uh, we're kind of still in the, we're really doing it, but also feeling a very strong un, uh, ramp up right now. The velocity of change is, is high because we had, when I started doing this project, we had about 40 uh, subscriptions in Azure for the region, mm -hmm. uh, but there wasn't much on them and they were like not set up in a, you know, uniform or useful way, and st so we're basically trying to remove that was the legacy that we had. It wasn't that much, but now we have already over a hundred subscriptions, uh, and and quickly increasing. So we are public sector, and we are doing this now. It's not a we're not just talking about doing it. It is already happening, okay. and it's pretty pretty big. Have Have you had a chance to talk to other? folks doing it in other countries in the European Union? Not in the other countries. I am talking to other regions and other, in other inside know, of communes, Sweden. yes. Other regions, other communes. Are they ahead of you, behind you? Behind, we're probably, most Okay, of them, so you're, you're leading the way, your region, that uh, people are looking to you I th I th for guidance. I think so. So we're talking to, for example, our local Microsoft uh, representa rep representatives, mm. and they're talking to a lot of them, uh, mm. different ones, and they're telling us that we are uh, in, in a strong place. We're, we mm. are really doing it, and others are hoping to be able to do it soon. But we're a little bit ahead, I think, mm -hmm. which is cool. Uh, are there any other challenges for public sectors? I'm, I'm trying to look for things that are yeah. not, that are unique to the public sector. Um, I mean, I get they, they, they want I privacy, they yeah. want uh, scalability, they want reliability. So th why those, yeah, but why everybody wants that. Everybody wants that, but while this is not unique, to public sector, um, because of the, the size and magnitude of an, and, and, and legacy of IT within public sector, okay. uh, they have been doing for many decades, right, IT uh. systems. There's so much legacy and so much rules and regulations and things like, this is how we have done it for such a long time, this sure. is how we do that, that that becomes a challenge as well. You have to break up with the past in a sense and you have to challenge those assumptions. Mm -hmm. For example, oh, Everything needs to go to the, through this central control system. Okay, why? Well, because that's how we do it. Okay, yeah. so you want to take an old legacy central control system and apply that also to Azure. Uh, well, what is the purpose of this, is my question, right? Uh, give me the actual um, thing that you're living up to. Like, give me the code, give me the, wh what, is, what is this? Why are we yeah. doing that? And the, the, the answer is not, we're using that system because we're using that system, right? Yeah, that's well not that's nobody wrote a law saying you must use this centralized system. They wrote no. a law saying you must have some there's governance. Some, yeah, there's some governance, some regulation. And what is the specific yeah. governance what, that's what required? Is, yes, exactly. So give me those requirements and I will ensure that the services that we run in the Azure platform meet, those, meet requirements. those requirements, but we will not, I repeat, we will not oh. take that old system and apply it to Azure and effectively you know, weigh the cloud down by these, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> these things, things that, that were from, from 
days of yarn, right? Yep, they, they yeah. made sense back then. They did, <laughs> and we needed those, but now we have to be brave and, like I said, break up with the past a little bit there and, and start using the, the built-in services that are purposefully put in there for auditing and other things that, that already exists in the cloud. So you yeah. don't need a separate auditing system. It is already in there. Oh, <laughs> good point. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, these are problems that I see in uh, large organizations yeah. that have been around for a long time mm -hmm. and have done, they've, their IT departments have, have implemented things for decades. Exactly. Same thing, they're trying to migrate to the cloud. There's bringing all the bad things with them. There's, uh, <laughs> there's, there's refactoring, yeah. there's big cloud native. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we're talking about new applications in the cloud now, right? For, yeah. for example, right? So that's one of the reasons why public sector, uh, again, we talked about that in, 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 the, in the opening of here, uh, that they want to use AI services as well. Mm. So for example, um, analyzing pathology pictures. Now we're still talking, we're talking patient data. A okay. fo photo of, of things that that has been you know removed from patient from people's bodies right then mm. taking the picture pathology mm. photographs okay. right and then running analysis on that so that um, for example when when you have a, a photo and I, this is a, a current project so it's kind of interesting I find this fascinating yeah. but you, you you would need two doctors separate to to physically look at the imagery and and try to determine if there's something cancer or something that okay. if there's a tumor or whatnot uh, what, what <coughs> for example, as just as an example, what is trying to do now is, for example, let uh, the uh, let the AI review the image and find the places in the image that seems to be interesting, and and basically hopefully replace one of the doctors with AI instead, right. uh, because the AI doesn't get tired, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And it can process all of these images, and and that saves up um, uh, doctors' times. Uh, and, and it scales. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so I like the idea that uh, the AI is good at saying, these are definitely not cancerous, yeah. these maybe definitely are, but mm -hmm. then having a human being yeah. in there because, because then uh, AI is not yeah. perfect, mm -hmm. not yet. But <laughs> if, if, if a doctor, if a trained doctor sits down with a photograph, that trained doctor can also immediately see all of these areas are clear, there's maybe something there. Right. The AI can do the same. Right, right. And with, with accuracy that is, is, is good enough, because what they're doing is that they're comparing, right? They're sitting down with, uh, uh, the doc they're doing it traditionally, two doctors are doing it, mm -hmm. and then they're doing the same with an AI and a doctor. Mm -hmm. And then they compare the results and see if, are we within reason here? Uh, so that's a, a reason to, uh, that's that's an example of using cloud services to achieve more mm -hmm. value for the citizens who actually pay the taxes for this system, right? Well, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, and uh, saves more. money, saves yeah, time, exactly, and hopefully so saves lives. So yeah, exactly, and do more uh, with uh, the same funds or less, if you will. This is a cool project. It's a very cool project. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Cool. Is there anything else we should talk about on this topic that uh, oh, we haven't covered yet? I think we covered a lot of ground here. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and I, I, I am fascinated with this, and it is a uh, it is in the starting, it's, we're, 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 we have gone past the starting blocks. We're, we're running okay. out uh, already, um, but there, there's uh, such a journey still to be had here. Right. Uh, Before we go, let's talk about Magnus. Where are you speaking next? Oh, where am I speaking next? Um, that's probably honestly going to be in the fall now. Which okay, is this might not come out for a month or two. So okay, cool. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's going to be in the fall. But I, I'm looking forward to one that is uh, that I already have booked for the the fall, which is going to be a new conference in Tunisia. Uh, oh, I heard about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's Dev Days or something like mm -hmm. that, and it's a new one, and and I'm going to be there speaking. Awesome, yeah. Magnus. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs>